How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at The Equalizer 3, directed by Antoine Fuqua and starring Denzel Washington and Dakota Fanning. This is the third time we see Washington playing Robert McCall, who in the opening scenes of the movie is murdering the shit out of some very bad mafia men, as is his wont. But he comes away from the fight gravely wounded, and a passerby finds him near death in his car and takes him to a local doctor who manages to keep him alive. Over time, he comes to enjoy this small Italian village he finds himself in, but some other very bad mafia men are extorting the locals, and that does not sit well with Mr. McCall. Since the locals helped him, he decides to help them out, along with the assistance of a young CIA agent played by Dakota Fanning. Somehow, I had never seen the first two Equalizer movies, but with the third movie coming out, I decided maybe I should finally check them out. And they're actually not half bad. Washington plays a former Marine and DIA agent who is now just trying to live a quiet life in Boston, but of course his life is anything but quiet. And he seems to be slightly OCD. He has a habit of laying out napkins all over the table when he's eating or drinking, and he also has this weird thing where he times every single one of his fights, and the timing doesn't seem to serve any real purpose, it's just some weird quirk he has. And he has a tendency to become very protective of the people he meets as he tries to live this quiet life in Boston. In the first movie, there's a co-worker of his at the hardware store he works at who's trying to become a security guard, and McCall is helping him get into shape, more exercise, less potato chips. He also tries to help out that guy's family from some corrupt cops who are running a protection racket, and he helps out a young prostitute who is being trafficked by the Russian mafia. In the second movie, we see him helping out a young neighbor of his who is kind of a budding artist, but is also falling in with a bad crowd and doing bad gangster shit. And the main plot of that movie focuses on him getting revenge for an old friend of his. Both movies have a pretty elaborate shootout for the climax. In the first movie, he sets up a lot of deadly Home Alone-style traps in the hardware store. And the second movie ends with him fighting some mercenaries in a coastal town that's been evacuated because it's about to get hit by a hurricane. And both of these sequences are a lot of fun to watch. And overall, both movies are about a good man making sure some very bad men get their comeuppance, and that's always nice to see. I do have one minor nitpick with the story. It's made clear that McCall somehow faked his death in his last government operation, and only a select few people he trusts actually know he's still alive. But the problem with that is he doesn't seem to be putting all that much effort into staying off the radar. He didn't start a new life in some small village in a foreign country. It took him until the third movie to do that. In the first two movies, he's in Boston. He's not even using a fake name. In the second movie, he's working as a Lyft driver, which I assume means he has a bank account somewhere. Not exactly witness protection. But that aside, the first two movies were very enjoyable for what they were. The third movie has a bit of a different feel to it. It offers a change of scenery, which was nice. I think they did pretty much all they could do with Boston, and now we can finally get some international flavor in this franchise. Also, I think this is the first time we actually see any sense of vulnerability from McCall. In the first two movies, he is damn near invincible. He does suffer a few injuries here and there, but he pretty much shrugs it off. But in this movie, after he takes out that first batch of Italian mafia goons, he is very close to death and actually contemplates suicide for a minute. It's also the first time we actually see him sleep, which I thought the movie would make a bigger deal out of than they did, because that was one of the key points in the first movie. I guess because McCall has seen some shit in his life, he basically has permanent insomnia. He does not sleep at all. There's also something kind of odd that happens after he finally wakes up, when the doctor manages to remove the bullet in his back and saves his life. He goes to a local cafe and tries to order some tea, but then the waitress comes out and hands him a coffee and says, tea is for Englishmen and old ladies. But then the next time he's in that cafe, he orders tea and they just give it to him without argument. And they never question his order for tea ever again. It was a weird little story bit that they introduced and then almost immediately abandoned, and I really don't know why. Then over time he gets to know the local villagers and finds out they're being extorted by some more mafia guys, and he learns that they are smuggling some drugs into the country, which are then sold and the money is used for terrorism. This is how the CIA gets involved with the help of Dakota Fanning's character, and it turns out McCall has a very specific reason for wanting to work with her, which I won't get into because it's kind of a spoiler. And then Robert McCall does what Robert McCall does. There's a scene that was featured in the trailer where he's teaching a mafia goon the art of pressure points, and it's a really good scene. And then after torturing that asshole, he lets him go under the pretense that if they leave this village alone, that'll be the end of it. But then he just goes out and kills him a few hours later. And I didn't really understand why he 
put up that charade? Like, why act like you're possibly going to let these guys go if you have no intention of doing so? I don't think the people are going to care if these guys end up dead. They hate them too. Even the local cops have made it quite clear they're willing to look the other way. I do like Washington in this role. He is very good at playing this older, retired soldier whose best days are clearly behind him, but he is still smart as hell and knows five different ways to kill you with a credit card, so you don't want to cross him. And really, all he wants to do is help people. Now, sometimes that involves going on a murderous rampage, but you gotta do what you gotta do. As for Fanning, her performance was fine, but I feel like they really did not know what to do with this character. She doesn't have a whole lot of agency. It feels like she's just there to wait for McCall to tell her what to do and then do it. It's like they wanted to give McCall someone to work with, but they couldn't really figure out how. And I was kind of disappointed with how this movie ends. The first two had these elaborate action sequences in the climax, and this did not. The climax for Equalizer 3 felt like something you would have seen in the middle of the previous two movies. And without giving too much away, the very end of that climax dragged on a lot longer than it should have, and really just started to feel sadistic. And it's not like none of these people deserve to die the way they did. They're horrible people, but it just felt a bit out of character compared to the first two movies. McCall wasn't this sadistic to the villain of the second movie, and that guy killed his best friend. Overall, that climax just did not hit as hard. In fact, I remember thinking when the credits started rolling, wait, that was it? Equalizer 3 had its moments and tried to mix up the formula with some degree of success, but I think the script needed another pass. It was still decent, but definitely a step down from the previous two. If you want to see Denzel Washington murder the shit out of some very, very bad men, it's worth a matinee. It's probably not absolutely necessary to see the first two movies beforehand if you haven't already, but there are a couple of details that you will miss if you don't. And that's all I have to say about The Equalizer 3. Till next time, take care.